Hi guys, thanks for tuning this episode of Nick Egan Times. On this episode, we have a brilliant guest. We have Chris A. Matthews. Chris is an exceptional relationship coach, expert, therapist, and author. Chris has just released an excellent book called Finding Your Relationship Fix. Welcome, Chris, and thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. How's it all been going over there? Everything's going great, great. Weather's good. I'm out of Charlotte, North Carolina right now, so everything is good. Amazing. And tell me, how's the pandemic um, affected you personally and professionally? So personally, it's actually brought me and my family closer. Having the ability to work from home more often, the kids being home more, it, it really has helped out. And then professionally, it's done the same. More people now than ever are seeking out mental health services, seeking out counseling for relationships. So we, we've had an influx in clientele, which is always a good thing in business. That's superb. All right, um, let's jump straight into it. Uh, tell me about your family and even more, tell me about growing up in your journey so far. Yeah, so my wife and I, we actually met in college and I was an undergraduate at UNC Charlotte University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And we had met online. We, we got really serious, really fast. We got pregnant unexpectedly. And we have a child now who, who's 14, but at the time in college, we were, we were lost and we didn't know what to do. So I actually went to a counseling center and walked in there and realized no one in there looked like me. And um, we went to the church and just tried to find our way. Long story short, we ended up making it work the hard way, ups and downs, trials and tribulations. So after we figured it out, I went back to school, got a master's in marriage and family therapy and have been helping couples ever since. So 16 years married, three kids later, we're thriving. <laughs> That's exceptional and incredible. All right. Um, tell me about your book. So the book is called Finding Your Relationship Fix, The Four Reasons Couples Seek Counseling. And as an exclusive couples therapist, I had an opportunity over the last several years to work with, with thousands of couples, hundreds of hours of therapy. And the book is really a guide to help consumers who are seeking couples counseling or are thinking about counseling with an opportunity to see what it looks like inside the therapy room before you have to go inside the therapy room. The goal is to present the fact that four reasons are why most couples seek therapy. And they're really rooted in feelings. When one or both partners do not feel safe, heard, understood, or cared for, that usually leads them to want to go to therapy. And the book breaks down how all the major issues that you might imagine, whether it be money, intimacy, child rearing, boundaries, all of that's put together in the book but it's broken up under those four reasons and the reader will have an opportunity to get introduced to some therapeutic techniques and concepts that they'll actually be using if they do decide to go to therapy. Uh, cool, that's, that's really great insights into the book. What are, I guess if you could break it down just briefly, the four key points, I know you mentioned them, but what is actually the catalyst behind them? Why do you think, what is the definition behind it? So the goal is to, provide the public, you mentioned earlier in the interview about like the pandemic. So we have more people than ever seeking out counseling. As an African-American male, black male, a lot of people in my culture don't historically go to counseling. So the premise of the book was to help people, help couples, help intimate partners who might be going through some rough patches to use the book as a compass to navigate through the mental health counseling system. Second, if you are afraid of going to counseling, the book will open you up to the ideas of how a therapist doesn't solve your problems for you. A therapist doesn't tell you what to do. A therapist is essentially the tour guide. They walk you through the issues. They walk you through your pain and they walk you through the solutions as well. And that was why I wrote the book because a lot of the couples I see is usually their first time in counseling and they didn't have a roadmap. And people are vulnerable when they seek out counseling. So you may only have one shot to get it right. And I wanna make sure the public's educated so when they select a therapist, they know what to look for. And the book gives them that. That's tremendous. That's tremendous work you're doing. I'm definitely got a copy of the book. Um, where can they purchase it to the book? So it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. If you just Google finding your relationship fix, the four reasons couples seek counseling, 
It's also on Audible as well. And you can seek a copy through my personal website, which is the spelling of my name, Chris A. Matthews, uh, C-H-R-I-S, A. Matthews with two T's, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S dot com. Awesome. With, with relationships, obviously, you've been doing it a while now, and you've obviously seen relationships come and go. What, what have you seen, I guess, as a definition of a relationship that previously was obviously on the rocks and then actually came back? What, what was the foundation and, I guess, what was your support you helped to make that happen as well? I love that question because a lot of the couples that I work with, when it comes to reviving the relationship, is usually after infidelity or cheating. And what helps the couple come back after cheating is openness. And openness in the initial phases of therapy where I help the couple looks like being transparent about how you feel, what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing, and then asking questions about why you are going to do better if you decide to stay in that relationship. So it's really a transformational process that I walk couples through. And that's a major issue when you think about betrayal or dishonesty, which is all rooted in cheating. And a lot of the couples make it because they're willing to submit to the process of being vulnerable, being open, and then that can lead to truth. And one has to come before the other. You can't have forgiveness without openness. Uh, and what... Um... What makes a 50-50 relationship? So I, I like to use the term 100-100, meaning when you're with a partner, you're going to bring all of yourself in. You're going to bring your past, your current, and your future. So you don't really have 50%. You actually have all of yourself. And what makes that is your ability to first and foremost know what you want. A lot of what I talk about on my Instagram account, my post, and my YouTube videos are about first finding love for you before trying to love someone else. And that's what's going to allow you the opportunity to bring 100% of yourself into a relationship because you've done the work first and you have that blueprint where it looks like loving you first before you try to love someone else. And that's what makes a great relationship. That's great insight. And going back, you know, obviously relationships and I guess generally the society has changed and it's always growing and things are always um, changing. What what do you see being problems now for relationships and couples that are getting a relationship or going to get married or getting engaged, anything like that, versus the past to where it's now? And what can, I guess, couples or relationships do to try and help prevent that? The, the society obviously has its influence these days. Yeah. So society now has created this mentality of entitlement where people will see a Disney movie or romance um, movie and they think that's how a relationship is supposed to be. Things are just supposed to magically happen. And back in the day before cell phones and social media and the Kardashians and all of these uh, reality TV shows, people had to do the hard work, which looked like sitting beside your partner and talking, <laughs> not just texting and sending emojis. <laughs> so if we can get back to that organicness of writing letters to your partner, speaking and listening, and not just speaking because you want a point to be made, but taking the time to truly understand your partner and to get to know them. And I believe that we're going to be able to do that with a lot of the advice out now, because when you think back in the days, like I said earlier, as a man of color, counseling wasn't something that people were talking about. Mental health now is a buzzword. Everyone's talking about mental health. Everyone's talking about counseling. You have celebrities and you have people confessing that they've gone through couples counseling. So that's going to be the shift because we went from having to figure it out yourself. Then there was this space where social media got involved. Now we're transitioning back to trained professionals and clinicians who are helping people get centered again. So I think we're going to be headed in the right direction. That's great. That's great. And what advice would you give to any couple or person listening that's in a toxic relationship at the present moment or they're having troubles in your relationship? What advice would you give them? If you're having toxic issues or troubles in your relationship now, the first step would be to do an autopsy. I had the opportunity to read David, Gog David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me, and he talks about doing a live autopsy. And I believe you should do that on your relationship if you're having issues. Slow down and spend time by yourself reflecting on first and foremost, what you need, what you want, and then what are you 
expecting from your partner. Once you've done that for yourself, being able to communicate and present that to your partner. And if you find that you need help, reach out to a trained professional. Speak to a counselor so you don't have to do that by yourself. The number one issue couples, the, the number one reason why couples don't talk to each other is they don't feel safe. So I would advise these couples that are going through issues, go into counseling so you have that safe space to process your issues. Or the issue may also be something that leads you to a cordial separation. Therapists don't determine what happens. We just help there be some type of outcome. And I believe that would be the advice I would give to those who are, are currently uh, having some issues. Well, you know? well, that's great advice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm wondering what inspires you daily? What motivates you? My wife, my own marriage. I use the analogy of how when you eat something good or you tasted some amazing part of life, you want to share it with everybody. Every day I get to taste the fruits of an amazing marriage. I get to see a marriage at work. That I, I get to see a marriage at work, a marriage that supports my profession, that supports my, my, my health. My wife is really big on just making sure I can be the best version of me. And I want to help everyone in the world, everybody I can touch to get the same love and joy that I have that comes by way of a healthy relationship. And that's what gets me up every morning. <laughs> that's tremendous. What, what are your future plans? So my future plans look like continuing to grow my brain, grow myself. I'm always learning every day. And once I continue to grow and learn, I would love to host national and international retreats. I've currently started doing some local retreats, but to expand this message of what's required to have a healthy relationship and ultimately doing that across the world on platforms that integrate vacation with self-development and relationship improvement. And that would be my ultimate goal. Wow, that sounds amazing. What are your hobbies and passions aside from the counseling and everything you're doing? What do you like to do outside away from that? I love mountain biking. <laughs> right <laughs> now, today is 82 degrees and I had the opportunity to get on my bike. Um, I'm always on the mountain biking trails. I love being outdoors. Uh, all of my kids run track everyone down to the baby. So tomorrow we'll be at the um, first track meet of the season. So spending time with my family, mountain biking and travel. I love seeing the world. We have a big trip planned to Cairo, Egypt this summer. So those are the three things I love to do. And they all involve outside of the mountain biking being with my family. <laughs> what, what gives a relationship longevity? Making sure that you start it over every day. I use the example about how that movie in ground, the movie Groundhog Day, every day the person he was pursuing forgot. And you have to forget that you can't get comfortable, meaning every day I wake up and I'm trying to please my wife and she's trying to please me as well. I think relationships break down when we take them for granted. But if you look at that relationship as something that you have to nourish every day, when you think about a healthy lifestyle, you can't just eat one healthy meal or get one exercise routine in the gym done. So that's what's going to make a healthy relationship. It's a lifestyle. And it's the consistency. I totally, totally understand and agree with that. Um, Chris, thanks for coming on the podcast. I do appreciate it. I think, you know, you're doing incredible and amazing work around the world, obviously, especially with the book and helping couples get through their relationships. So, yeah, thank you. And yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks, mate.